Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and another brisk Colorado morning here in the shop. The good news is that this is the warm day for the next few days. Today's high temperature might be close to 40. In a couple of days, the high temperature is only supposed to be 18 with a low below zero. And while that sounds really cold, it really isn't that atypical for this time of the year in Colorado. In fact, we've really been much warmer than normal. But we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's not going to be too bitter cold today. And we're going to do one of our more requested videos. We're going to take a look at some pause tongs. These really are just a V-bit or bolt style tong. They are fairly lightweight and fairly simple in construction. But you have to pay attention to the details to get them right. There's some specific setup that we have to do to get the bar prepared. And some bending that has to be done just right. Otherwise these don't come out very well. I first saw this style of tongs demonstrated by Rob Gunther at the Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference in Carbondale probably close to 20 years ago. I've seen lots of write-ups from other people. I don't think this is a proprietary tong design. The story that I remember hearing was that it was a pair of tongs that a blacksmith named Daryl Posniak, and I might be getting that name wrong, but he had found an old pair similar to this and had figured out how to make them and that's why they are called pause tongs in honor of his name. But lots of people make their versions of them. I have pause tongs in the shop made by different people and they're all a little bit different. This particular pair is one I made and this pair was made by a friend at about the same time period that Rob had demonstrated them at the conference. And this was made by Rob, Brad and Chad Gunther. I'm not sure one in particular but they were running a tool company called G3 Tools and they made an excellent version of these tongs, but I think they're so busy doing ornamental blacksmithing that they no longer make these. Now these tongs start off with a piece of quarter by one stock that is about 12 to 14 inches long. That just depends on how long you want the reins on your tongs to be. If you want longer reins, use longer stock. So that equates essentially to 6 mil by 25 mil. And it looks like that's about 36 centimeters long. Again, the length is a little bit variable depending on how long you want the reins for your tongs to be and how heavy you want the reins for your tongs to be. We're going to start with a simple layout to mark the points that need to be fullered in. And this is a fairly important step to get it right and the fullering is important. So this is an inch and a quarter in from the end and three inches in. We need center punch marks. So that looks like about 30 centimeters and seven and a half centimeters roughly. And these marks are just a guide for where we're going to fuller. So while it's convenient to mark them in the center, that isn't absolutely critical because we aren't going to drill a hole or anything like this. Now this end mark we're going to fuller in with a half inch fuller, a quarter inch deep, and this one we're going to go three eighths inch deep, again with a, a half inch diameter fuller. So that's a roughly a 13 millimeter fuller, and quarter inch deep I guess would be six millimeters deep, and three eighths deep is about 10 millimeters deep. Now to make pause tongs, you will need to make some very specialized, highly complicated, sophisticated tooling. The first thing we need is just a fuller. And it's a half inch diameter fuller. It can be a conventional bottom fuller that goes in the hardy hole. It can be a top fuller. You could use a round rod under a treadle hammer. I've just bit a round rod over, half inch round bar, or about 13 millimeters. And this just drops into the Pritchell hole, and it's all the fuller you really need. You also need a bending fork. Again, it's half inch or 13 millimeter round bar with seven eighths between. This is important that it's right at seven eighths, or that's about 22 millimeters, I think. The other item is a half inch thick spacer, and it doesn't have to have a hardy shank, but it will help keep it from falling off the anvil, but if you don't mind chasing it around the anvil, that's not vital. Or you could hold it down with a hold fast. But in any case, this is again is half inch thick, or 13 millimeters thick. The width doesn't matter. So let's start off with our half inch fuller. 
We just want to line that first center punch mark up with the, the fuller, and we want to fuller in a quarter of an inch. Again, quarter inch is about six millimeters. And worth, worth checking your measurement. That's about right. And the next one we want to fuller in about three eighths of an inch, which I believe is about 10 millimeters. I don't worry about too much about the little deformities in the bar at this point. This one could be a hair deeper. Okay, so that's correct there. Now do the same thing with both bars, but I'm not going to show both because it looks just like this. Our next step will be to bevel this off and we're going to go to just under a half an inch here and we don't want to take this off. We're not going all the way to the bottom of the fuller. We're keeping this lip right here and we're just going to draw this out. It's going to upset as you do this and that's okay. You want to leave it as upset as you can. You need to clean it up so it doesn't act weird, but, but if it upsets, that's just fine. That's pretty much all you got to do there. You say try to keep the the mushrooming under control, but let it upset. And we're going to split that with a chisel later, and it's better off if it's a little bit thicker. We want that just under a half inch. That's pretty good. And then we want to upset this corner back so that we are at 90 degrees across here. Otherwise that sticks out and it's in your way when you use the tongs. So, so we just want to push that corner back. We just want to bring that back so it's at 90 degrees here. I'm just trying to center that upset up so it's not all off to one side. So that's what you want to do. You want to take the time to make both pieces look the same. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to do the same thing but in this section and we're going to go from the bottom of this first quarter inch deep fuller or six mil deep fuller and we're just going to slope back to here. So it's not a whole lot of work that has to be done here. This one a nice clean slope and here you do want to reduce the thickness back down and keep it at a quarter of an inch so that everything works smoothly later. So if you're comfortable with your aim you can get right in there and just draw this back. If you're not comfortable with your aim hook that fuller over the edge of your anvil and just pay attention so you don't take this down too far. But again, you want this to be flat and quarter inch here, and this you leave upset. So that's that step. Pretty simple, really. Then here, this gets drawn out into the reins. And you can either draw this out first before we do any bending of the jaw, or you can do it after. It's easier to hold on to this with another pair of tongs now but this might get a little thin and hard to work with later when we're doing the bending. So it's just kind of up to, to how you want to go. I'm going to go ahead and draw it out first. And I'm going to start this just like I did the other two by sloping this in here. And again, you can do it either from the back or from the front, depending on how comfortable you are with your, your aim. Just try to keep everything under control as best you can. Now this thickness here is what you want right up at this point. This is where the boss will be. This is the V-bit here and this is going to be a loop. 
but from here out you want to taper until you're about a quarter inch square. Depends on how heavy duty you want your tongs and what material you're going to hold with your tongs. But these tend to be rectangular reins that just have the corners knocked off as opposed to round reins. So with our transition point defined, it's just a matter of drawing these out to what you want. I'm going to start here, but the next heat I'll turn it around and work out. This is just a matter of taking the time to do the job. I also encourage you to make the reins a little bit shorter because that makes it a little bit easier. Personally on these I kind of like shorter reins. I don't think they need super long ones. But it is entirely up to you how long you want the reins on these. But if you start this way and work out and these get long enough, then you just cut off the excess. Now the truth is, I already drew one of these out on the power hammer that was cut the same length and I ended up with a 21 inch set of reins and I think that's serious overkill. There's my typical set of pause tongs, the reins are much shorter. So I don't think we need to make them that long. So I'm going to draw this pair out until it's what I would prefer. Cut all the excess off. Then I'll make that other pair match this set. And I'll actually cut it off a little early and estimate what I need because it'll make it easier to finish this end. But just comparing a pair I like is really all I need to do to see how much more I want. I've got plenty of material so I'm just going to cut it off right here. So I'm losing about three inches here. So what's that, about seven or eight centimeters. So I definitely cut my blanks way too long. So that's what I've got there. And there's a lot of material there to still draw out. A little fat right through there, so we'll need to thin that out. I'm getting real happy with this section up in here. I'm going to go ahead and knock the corners off of that. And then I shouldn't have to come back to that.
Now it's just a matter from here out. We still have plenty of material. This is already longer than what these older pair, but I think it'll be okay now. So now it's mostly just a matter of getting rid of any thick sections and trying to give them a graceful taper. It's just pretty much what I want. It's just really cleaning it up at this point. So at this point, it's just a matter of taking these and making them look just like you want them to. I'm pretty happy with the length. And then make both pair match, or both halves match, I should say. I do like to kind of round up the edges where my hands are. It's not, not a round bar, it's still flat and cross section, but oval on the ends, flat in the middle, something like that. And just, like I say, make both sides match. You should now have two tong halves that are nearly an exact match, as close as you can come. The critical part really is up here where the jaw is going to be because they just won't line up right if they aren't the same. So make sure that's the same. If the reins aren't perfectly identical, it's really not going to hurt anything. Before we go on, you also need to make sure you have your bending fork and your half inch spacer for the anvil. So I'm going to let you guys go get to work on this stuff. I'm going to get on to some other things and then we will pick this project up with a part two in the next couple of days. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you join me again in a couple of days for our exciting conclusion of making pause tongs. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop and either make the tong half so you can work along with this project or just make anything else. Challenge your abilities, challenge your creativity, but have fun, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.